Hi, I'm Lara, and this is Knife Steel Nerd. So today we're talking about AR RPM 9. This is a steel that was announced in June 2020 on the CJRB Instagram. Though, oddly, their Instagram doesn't go back that far anymore, but I have a screenshot of their original post. CJRB is another brand owned by Artisan Cutlery. They announced that AR RPM 9 stands for Artisan Rare Powdered Material 9 Element Steel. That's a very odd name. The artisan part makes sense. That's the parent company. So that refers to artisan cutlery. But why artisan rare? I, I don't know what's rare about the steel. Is it AR artisan rare to have an oblique reference to AR rifles? Otherwise, I don't understand why it'd be AR. Why not AC for artisan cutlery? Then powdered material is again odd, because usually with PM steels we call them powder metallurgy, or sometimes particle metallurgy, but not powdered material. In my original Patreon post where I reacted to their announcement of the steel, I hypothesized that maybe they were using weasel words, that it wasn't actually powder metallurgy, but then in September of 2020 they specifically called it powdered metallurgy. So, but we'll come back to that. Then nine element steel which is a good lead into what is the composition. So it was a few months before they actually announced it. But in September of that year, 2020, they released the composition to an Instagram video. They claimed this was a new exclusive steel that they designed with their knives in mind. So Nine Elements was caught at bit, so I was intrigued by what this might be. But it was pretty underwhelming. The composition they specified is identical to 9CR18 MoV. That's used in a bunch of Chinese knives. It's identical to the European specification 1.4112 and pretty similar to the American Steel 440B. But there were a few oddities in their description. One is that they said part of the nine elements was less than 0.4% nickel. That's the same allowable maximum for nickel in 9CR18 MoV. And giving only a maximum allowable for the nickel means that it isn't an intentional addition. So there is no minimum requirement. This is because nickel is present in most recycled stainless steels. For example, I measured the composition of a bunch of powder metallurgy steels from Crucible, Carpenter, Bowler, and Udahome, and all of them had between 0.16 and 0.28% nickel, because there's always a little bit of nickel in these recycled steels. So, they said that there's nine elements, but one of the elements is nickel, which isn't even an intentional addition. So, it should be AR RPM 8 at best. Another weird thing they said in that Instagram video back in 2020 was that there were rare earth elements. Elements plural. So, potentially, we are back up to nine elements, or maybe even more. Before saying what the rare earth elements were, the Instagram video cut off. Less than 0.4% nickel. So this was a big mystery at first. Rare earth elements are used in some steels. Two common-ish ones are lanthanum and cerium, and they're used for a couple different reasons in steel making, but it's still a pretty unusual addition, especially to announce it publicly, because usually when the steel companies use those elements, it's not listed on the data sheet. They use it as part of their steel making process, but they're not announcing it publicly. So to announce publicly that they're adding a rare earth element is odd. But very shortly after that Instagram video, they clarified to Knife Newsroom that the rare earth elements were phosphorus and sulfur, and they said that again by putting that original Instagram video on YouTube where it wasn't cut off, but that wasn't until December, a few months after the September Instagram video. And less than 0.05% trace elements, which includes sulfur and phosphorus. Now, phosphorus and sulfur are not rare earth elements. No one calls them rare earth elements. I've never heard anyone say that they're rare earth elements. So the there's no rare earth elements in the steel as far as we know. And they said that it was a maximum for phosphorus and sulfur. So again, not an intentional addition. That makes sense because phosphorus and sulfur are rarely added. There's a couple of specific scenarios, but none that would make us excited for it to be in a knife steel. Like sulfur can be added to improve machinability, but it doesn't help properties. It can make them worse, especially toughness. Normally, phosphorus and sulfur are listed as maximums on a spec sheet because we don't want them. We want them to be as low as possible. So without the rare earth element that it turns out was not in the steel, we're down to seven elements. So it should be called AR RPM 7, not even AR RPM 9. The only potentially relevant change to the composition versus 9CR18 MoV is cobalt. They said that there was 0.3% cobalt. 
Now, again, I wasn't sure, is this a maximum for cobalt? Because, again, cobalt can be present in a lot of recycled steel. And 0.3% is a very small amount. If you were given two steels, one with cobalt and one with 0.3% cobalt and one without cobalt, I would be surprised if you could tell the difference in terms of the properties. It's a very small addition, and cobalt can have somewhat small effects on steel anyway. So why 0.3% cobalt? Maybe that's their excuse to call it a new steel. Uh, so I measured the composition of the AR RPM 9 in a knife that we bought. We measured it with optical emission spectroscopy, and the elements were within expected ranges. The nickel was 0.19%, normal for recycled steel. The cobalt was around 0.3%, meaning that they likely are intentionally adding it. It's not just part of the recycled steel. That would be high for recycled steel without a cobalt addition. Otherwise, the composition is extremely similar to what they announced was ARRPM9, which again is almost identical to 9CR18 MoV. Now, like I said, another big question I had was whether this steel was actually powder metallurgy. Like they had originally called it powdered material, and they seem to frequently misunderstand what the steel is that they're getting. Like they don't know what a nickel maximum is, they don't know what rare earth elements are, they don't know what phosphorus and sulfur are, so despite their big claims that they are designing this steel Specifically for their knives, they don't know anything about steel. I guess this is normal of knife companies. They talk big about their steel knowledge. Usually their steel knowledge is relatively limited. Another thing I thought in that original Patreon article I had about the steel is I proposed that it might be spray form. And since the release of ARRPM9, Two Sun Knives, they've come out with some knives in their proprietary steel called YJ01V1 which is a spray form version of a slightly modified M390. And that steel is made by Foshan Fenghe. I'm sure I pronounced that perfectly. Or not. Anyway, what is spray form? Spray form is somewhat similar to powder metallurgy. It's in between normal conventional casting of steel and powder metallurgy. In conventional casting, liquid steel is poured in a mold and it slowly cools. So everything, the alloys segregate and the carbides get very large, and that leads to worse toughness. With powder metallurgy, liquid steel passes through a nozzle and is sprayed with nitrogen to rapidly solidify, and that forms it into fine particles that look like a powder. They put that in a canister under high pressure and temperature called hot isostatic pressing to create a solid ingot. Then that ingot they can forge and roll like any other ingot. Spray form is in between. So it's similar to powder metallurgy in that the liquid goes through a nozzle and is sprayed with nitrogen gas, but instead of fully solidifying, the partially solidified steel is sprayed onto a table, which lowers during processing to create the ingot. So because it doesn't totally rapidly solidify, but instead is sprayed semi-solid onto this table, the cooling rate is in between conventional steel making and powder metallurgy. So spray form is not powder metallurgy. It is not called powder metallurgy, at least not by people that understand what it is. And the carbides and the properties are in between conventional and spray form. So here are micrographs of D2 made in the three different methods. So conventional, it's got very large carbides. Powder metallurgy, pretty small carbides, and they're very evenly distributed and similar in size. And then spray form is in between. So bigger than powder metallurgy and smaller than in conventional steel making. So spray form is intermediate in cost, intermediate in properties between conventional and powder metallurgy, but it is not powder metallurgy. As one more example of a spray form steel from that same Feng Hei company, they made a ripoff of M390 with spray form and they posted micrographs of it to their website. So on the left here is the powder metallurgy M390 and on the right is their spray form version. You can see that the carbides are larger than the powder metallurgy M390. So. Our big question was, is ARRPM9 actually powder metallurgy? So, Sean Houston of Triple B Handmade and I, we bought a couple of knives from Artisan Cutlery to look at the microstructure. So we cut up those knives and we looked at the microstructure, and those carbides are too big to be powder metallurgy. Uh, and looking at a similar magnification to some spray form D2, the carbides of the spray form ARRPM9 are similar. There's a couple that look a little bigger to me than I would think with spray form. So we did one more thing to compare. We got artisan cutlery knife in 
AR RPM 9 and another in the 9CR18 MOV and we looked at the edges. And if you look at the edges under high magnification, you can actually see the carbides in the edge. And in the AR RPM 9 knife, the edge, the carbides look relatively small. But when we looked at the 9CR18 MOV, the carbides did look significantly larger. So this would point to there being a different technology being used for the AR RPM 9 to make the carbide smaller. And again, this would point to spray form being how the steel was made. So this is why I think that it is false advertising. One AR RPM 9, there are not nine elements being added. So we need to use a seven instead of a nine. And it is not powder metallurgy, it is most likely spray form, so I think we should rename the steel Artisan Spray Form 7 Element Steel, or ASF7 for short. So now we fixed it, and it's not false advertising anymore. Okay, so now that we know what ARRPM9 is and what it isn't, we can talk about what the properties of the steel are. Spray form technology does improve toughness, though not to the same extent as powder metallurgy. So I have a chart here with conventional D2, PSF27, that's a spray form D2, and then CPM D2, that's a powder metallurgy D2. And there is a clear change in toughness as you move up to the more expensive technology. So CPM D2 is almost three times the toughness of regular D2. It does depend on the composition, how much improvement in toughness you get with powder metallurgy. And then PSF27 is right in the middle. So we would expect a similar improvement over 9CR18 MOV if we made it with spray form. So something like 50 to 100% higher toughness, up to double the toughness with spray form technology. So I have not tested the toughness of 9CR18 MOV. It would have similar toughness to something like 440C. 440C was around 6 foot-pounds at 59 Rockwell, so we would expect ARRPM9 to be in the 8 to 12 foot-pound range in my standard Sharpie toughness test. So nothing too spectacular, but the toughness would be the main potential improvement over regular 9CR18 MOV. In terms of hardness, it wouldn't really be any different. There are some reports that using powder metallurgy leads to a bit more consistent hardness because the carbides are smaller and dissolve more evenly, but that's not really that big of a deal to the end customer. Edge retention isn't really affected, so I did a big article a few years ago on 154CM versus CPM 154 Catra edge retention, and they perform basically identically. So again, I would expect the edge retention of ARRPM9 to be virtually identical to 9CR18 MOV, and that would be similar to 440C. So looking at my big edge retention chart, you can see 440C does okay at edge retention, and we would expect the same of 9CR18 MOV. It's possible it'd be a bit worse than 440C, but not incredibly worse, and it almost certainly wouldn't be better. In terms of corrosion resistance, again, there are some reports that corrosion resistance can be slightly improved by using powder metallurgy because the carbides are more even, and therefore the chromium in the matrix is more even, so there's not huge carbides where there is less chromium in solution around those big carbides. But overall, corrosion resistance, basically the same. So potential improvement in toughness, but other properties like edge retention, corrosion resistance, hardness, would be largely unchanged by the spray form technology. So that was our investigation into AR RPM 9. Somewhat interesting, you know, just exploring the false advertising of the market out there, or at the very least, the misunderstandings of knife companies about what steel it is that they're buying and what properties that it has. Uh, it was fun still trying to do a little bit of detective work to figure out what it is. I don't know what to think about this. I think it's largely the incompetence of artisan cutlery that they are false advertising. I think, you know, it's more likely that they just don't know than it is that they have nefarious purposes, but still that is somewhat disappointing. So we had to buy some knives and cut them up and that costs money and the metallography costs money. So if you want to support us doing more investigations like this, please look into our Patreon, patreon.com slash knife still nerds. If you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe or whatever it is you're supposed to do, click the bell or something. So anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time.